We're back with another episode. We're back with another episode of Bury. I'm coming to you live and direct this week. Yes, a lot of my episodes were pre-recorded recently. And I'm here live and direct. When I'm here live and direct, that means that I'm filming it on a Saturday or Sunday. Yes. And yeah, how was my week? Um, how was my week? My week was tiring. Like I had um a lot of stuff to do after work and I didn't like that. I I, I just uh, like I'm not doing that ever again. So I was coming home eight, nine o'clock in the night. Thinking it's cute, and I'm just like, I'm tired, honey. I'm very, very tired. Um, I had to go to a doctor's appointment, and I did something else. Doctor's appointment. I did something on um Friday, but what was it? Was it important? I don't know. I don't remember, but I know I came home late Friday. I'll tell you that much. What did I do? It's not funny. Oh my god. Oh, duh. I had to take out my hair Friday because I remember I told you I had a hair appointment on Saturday. My hair took so long to take out. Like, oh my gosh. With sew-ins, you know you gotta be careful, bitch, when you cutting them threads. And you gotta make sure you only cutting the thread, don't cut the braid. And uh, that was a project. Taking out that DM stone was a goddamn project, okay? It took me like five hours to take it out. I just wear everything I love, like, and then the braids on the top were really little, so that took long. Then I had to wash it. My hair was a very, 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 very dirty. So I had to like clean the scalp yana, honey, like, ooh, soothe it. Just get all the dirt and the dust, and I had to detangle. It was naughty, oh girl. Friday was stressy boot honey. Then had to wake up early in the morning because my appointment was at 10 a.m. But I love my hair. I'm probably post it on my Instagram. Like the girl who did my hair, she did such a good job. She's really, I really like her. And she mad cool. We was watching Netflix. I watched the show The Circle with her. Or whatever. And I wouldn't watch that show on my own time, but I was kind of feeling it. Like, cause when somebody explained to me the show, I was like, mm, it sounds kind of corny. Like I don't like the, let me step this back, I don't like the concept, but when I was watching it, I was kind of getting into it, like, we was talking, we was chatting, and it made my hair go by faster for me, I'm like, damn, it's done already, but, um, yeah, I was feeling it, I was feeling the show, the circle, um, it's basically like, they have them all stay in the house. If she want to be on the show, I was like, I might want to be on the show because the show seemed kind of easy, like, whatever. And at the end, you can win 100 grand. Um, but basically, you live in an apartment, or whatever the case may be, and you are chatting with other people through a chat system, like a chat system. And then at the end of the week or the day, I'm not sure if it's week or it's a weekly or daily show, they rate who they like the most that day or week and who's ever number one is the influencer of the week and then if you are the influencer you could block somebody if you're blocked you're off the show so when i explain it it sounds kind of like uh, but when you watch it's kind of fun i might actually watch finish watching today i try to get into the show clickbait um i like the show clickbait it was good. I started watching it as I was taking out my hair. Um, I actually need to continue. I'm still on episode three. So that was good so far though. Um, and what else? Yeah, I've been watching some shows. Hello, good morning. Um, did I watch anything else? I don't think so. So yeah, so this week has been just a hectic week, TV show week. I'm happy to, to get into some new TV shows and stuff like that. I'm happy some shows are coming back. Um, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure Insecure is coming back October 15th. Is it the 15th, y'all? Uh, 14th is one of them, but I'm excited for that to be coming back. I just feel like it just makes the time go faster. I always get depressed because that show is so short, though, so whatever. Um, it's a lot going on, so yeah. Um, what happened to September, y'all? September was faster than August, bitch. Like, September going, going. 
go on, go on. September said, hello, good morning. <laughs> I am not here. But the summer just doesn't want to leave. It's still, like, kind of hot. Like, I don't know. It's always usually kind of like that, though. Sometimes September has really good days. Like, a lot of good days. So, hey, it is what it is. Anyway, <laughs> so, yeah, that was how my week was. I had a good week. I guess, well, I was just tired, to be honest. I was just too tired. Like, it was, like, I'm never doing that again. Like, I said, if I have stuff to do, I'm going to just probably try to start doing it on the weekends. Or if I have stuff to do, I'll only do one thing after work. Because that was, a, like, a lot of pressure on me. Like, I don't like that. I don't like feeling like it's a lot on my plate. You feel know I me? Mean? You feel know I me? Mean? Like, I don't like it. So, yeah. I wasn't feeling this week. Actually, oh, I wasn't feeling my week. I really wasn't. I was so tired. I had headaches, like, because I wasn't getting enough sleep and stuff like that. And I was eating late. I was like, I'm never doing this shit again. Trying to action pack my week with bullshit after work. And, like, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. And since we're live and direct, I'm going to talk about, well, I don't really talk about it too much, but the Met Gala. The Met Gala was... The, the talk of the town, I think last week, I definitely posted some stuff about the Met Gala on my IG. I just wasn't feeling the theme this year. America, like, America is too broad of a topic. You, you, you can't pick America, like, you know, like, you have to pick one segment of America. Like, America is a country, like, so many things, like, like, I, I just, I just don't know. Like, America, really... Like, it's just too many routes and places you could go with that. Like, um, I've been paying, I paid attention to fashion because I know I'm, like, kind of behind because, you know, I'm supposed to record it. Looked at some of the, the looks for spring, summer 2022. And I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the fashion. I still have a lot of shows I need to look at. But I'm, I'm feeling the fashion for spring, summer. Um... And I just feel like it's crazy, too, because I just feel like spring, summer's gonna be here. Like, we're still, we're in fall now, but I just feel like I could see spring, summer already, like, in the view. You know what I'm saying? So, it's just crazy how fast time flies. I was gonna give, give y'all some scuttle, but the only, I don't know if y'all find this interesting, but I find it quite interesting. I was like, do people find this interesting? But, um, the Karen Siffle drama, because, you know why I find it interesting, because I, no, I don't follow her, because I don't follow her on Instagram, but I know of Karen Siffle. If you know Karen Siffle, you know, you can know, like, you kind of know of her, but I always wondered, like, what exactly does she do, and how did she get this job? So, what it appeared to be was, for me, was, like, she would just help celebrities market and brand, but I've never seen her, like, working directly with any celebrity you know what i'm saying so i don't know she just always gave me mixy vibes like she just like being mixy like it, it never gave me she was really like in her job like does that make sense but you know she's fly she's cool i i mean i personally like her um but she never really gave me direct like you know how you know what somebody does like you you know how like all right somebody posts on their social media like what they do but you like what do they do like they might post oh i'm doing this i'm doing that but like you never really see them doing this and doing that does that make sense like that's what she gives me but i'm like maybe you don't see what she does on her social media because i mean it's kind of hard to post everything she does and maybe some stuff she has to be discretionary with because she works with celebrities so I don't know, but I always had a little side eye for her. Like, I always had one eye open with her. You know, like, that type of thing. So, it's just interesting. All this stuff is popping out the woodworks. And if y'all don't know who Karen Sue is, like I said, she's like a marketing... Oops. Um, like, you know, she markets for celebrities, I guess. She does their, like, branding and marketing. And um, she had a podcast on the Joe Button Network. And I just want to talk about that because I definitely said that... Wait and see that, um, girl, I guess, that podcast is not going to last long. And, bitch, they ain't put up a podcast and I think about two months. So, watch Brit says, bitch. I definitely said that shit. And they ain't put up a podcast in, like, two months or whatever. Um, it doesn't mean that the podcast is over. 
but I'm just saying, you know, because they never said it blatantly that it was over. Maybe they just stopped filming for a while. I don't know. But what I do know, they haven't put up an episode. <laughs> so whatever. Anyways, so how all of this tea done brewed up was the artist Joyner Lucas basically said that Karen Civil took 60K from him. After she paid him the 60K, after he paid her the 60K, sorry, she kind of ghosted him or whatever. And, she, and he was like, that was her last 60K or whatever. And then um, everybody, well, I don't know. I don't know what y'all follow after because I don't feel like Karen Civil was like the big person in everybody's eyes. Um, the, I call her comedian singer, Jesse Wu. Uh, they had gotten to a beef. I remember that briefly. I was just like very confused behind it. Cause sometimes I don't follow everything too sometimes. I'm like, oh, these bitches beefing, holla, gang, gang, or uh, whatever. So, um, Jesse Wu sues her for defamation of character. Then, uh, the Joyner Lucas incident. That one was the biggest to me. Then Jason Lee accused Karen of hacking and deleting his company Instagram. And getting stuff deleted. And she admitted that she did that. I'm like, y'all gonna stay the fuck woke, bitch. Okay? Not her paying a hacker to hack this man Instagram, bitch. That's crazy. It's crazy the shit people can do out here. It's really, really crazy. Um, That's crazy. But the thing with the Julia Lucas thing, number one, I believe his statement. Or whatever. She claimed, she said that she took it, but she paid people out to help him. Or whatever. Bitch, why are you paying people out to help him with his money? That was your job to help him. It was your job. It was your job. I get it though. And that's why I said, what does she do? Because maybe she's the type of person that just has connects, right? So like, maybe she's the type of person where you could just pay her. And she got connects where she could be like, yo, do this for me. Do this for my artist. Join her. Do this for my artist. Join her. Play his song on the radio. Um, Post him in... Um, I don't know, what's a mag post him in Vibe. I don't know if Vibe is still around. Post him in Vibe magazine. Uh send this to somebody. Oh, can you have join a walk your fashion show? Like maybe she's like really connected and you could just pay her and she's so well connected she could have you do XYZ and stuff for your business. Like that type shit. That's what it's giving me because she does seem very well connected. So she said that she never stole money from him. She said that um Karen claimed that the money was used to pay different people. In the industry for services to help you join the notice in the industry, but that the process takes longer to show results because success is not overnight. General Lucas insisted he was scammed. So, bitch, you know, it's a lot, a lot of stuff going on, you know. Lately, too, I've been really, like, paying attention to a lot of the stuff that you know, influencers and celebrities go through and stuff like that. Like, I know that it's been going around, but I feel like a lot of people are being more vocal about a lot of the shit that goes on in the industry. Like, we know about it, but, like, I feel like the celebrities don't talk about it in full depth as, you know, they should or want to. Um, I was just listening to Amanda Seals' podcast and she talked about being stalked. Which is something she doesn't really talk about. I mean, celebrities talk about having stalkers all the time, but she just never spoke about it. I was watching a YouTuber, Vicky Logan. And y'all might not be privy to YouTube and stuff like that or whatever. I was watching her podcast with her husband and she brought up how she was dealing with um, fertility issues. And I remember on the internet, a lot of people kept calling her a man. You know what I'm saying? So if you dealing with fertility issues and people's calling you a man, saying you look like a man, calling you Victor, that shit going to fuck up your mental health. And it's just like, damn, like people don't even have enough grace. Like I understand it's easy to want to make fun of celebrities sometimes, you know. I know. I get it. I get it. Bitch, I get it. And they just in the front eye. But we gotta have a heart, people. Because you don't know what people be going through, honey. Um, Who else? It was somebody. It's just a lot. I, I've been peeping a lot, like, the shit that people kind of been dealing with. Like, I understand y'all like, oh, these things been going on. And they have been going on. But I just feel like maybe with after the pandemic, a lot of stuff is too much for people to bear. Because, yeah, the world is opening up. We still have things we could do. But... It's still very limited. So it's like, let's say for instance, are the clubs open in New York City yet? I think so. I'm not sure. I don't know. But 
some stuff is still not like 100% the same. Like you got to be vaccinated to eat. Like some states are not the same. So a lot of times, you know, these celebrities are still limited in their work. You get what I'm saying? Basically what I'm trying to say. So they still, they have maybe this much more free time than they used to. And in that free time, they might think about things and things might stress them out. And I get, I get it. It's fun. It's fun to make fun of celebrities. And this is one of the reasons why I had to stop following the shave room. And I don't do the scuttlebutt as much because I don't want to be a part of the problem. I, I don't feel comfortable really like bullying celebrities i don't bully celebrities i feel like i get my opinion on things and it's okay to give your opinion especially about celebrities i feel because at the end of the day too they have a social responsibility when you have a big following when you have so much people looking after you you do unfortunately maybe you don't want to have to be mindful of what you say and the things that you do so it's good to have people i guess that's the way i look at like journalists and bloggers in some way some people who could kind of they're like they're like putting information in your face but they're also explaining to you why it's wrong does that make sense so it's like a little bit helpful, right? Because if we just allow celebrities to do and say whatever the fuck they want, it could destruct the world. So I feel like in some ways blogs and stuff are helpful because then there's people in the comments that say, look, you can't say that because XYZ and you can't do that because XYZ and that shit is dumb because XYZ. If we don't have nobody commenting on the dumb shit that celebrities do, the world would be fucking destructive because sometimes I'm not even privy to how things might impact somebody. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm not even knowledgeable to how what this celebrity did can impact this and why this person can't say this and X, Y, Z. You get what I'm saying? Like, sometimes I don't even know this, you know, and I'm pretty sure that goes for mad people. And that's how people learn why people are upset about things and why these things can't be said and, you know, how things operate. Like, with Nicki Minaj this week, she freaking... She was... She just... I feel like she's trying to cover up everything going on with her husband, honestly, because this doesn't even give me something Nicki Minaj would do. It's just, it's just not of her caliber. She was asking her fans what vaccine do you like the most? Like, everybody know Pfizer is serving the girls right now. Like, it's the only one that's FDA approved. So, I mean, I heard Moderna is really good. I heard Moderna is a really good one. Um, and that, I forgot why. Why? Why is the alarm? Somebody's car open. But, um, I heard Moderna's really good too. But, um, ultimately, Pfizer is FDA approved. So, everybody loves Pfizer. So, it was just weird that she would even ask that. Then she said something about her co her cousin in Trinidad is incompetent after he took the vaccine. And I was just like, really? Like, it doesn't give me something she would do. Or whatever. So, I just felt like she was just, just trying to clean up everything going on with her husband. Because it's a lot going on with him. With the rape allegations, he might have to go back to jail because he didn't, um, what's that called? He didn't file as a sex offender in California, so he could be facing some time. And that's embarrassing. It's really, really embarrassing to have your husband be a registered sex offender. That shit is fucking embarrassing. So, yeah, it can, you know, be embarrassing, but... No, prayers to everybody involved, honey. Ugh, it's just it's just a lot. These celebrities they go through a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. But you know, you can't stay in the top for too long. <laughs> Cause we gotta discuss our own topics, but a cup but loves. And what are we talking about this week? Funny. So this week we're talking about how not to care. Which is mad funny because actually I want to, well actually this is not the topic we're supposed to be talking about. But it's fine. We're supposed to talk about something different. But the reason why I want to saw how not to care is because i actually been talking about this this month like with myself. Because I talk to myself sometimes. Not like a crazy person but you know. I should say think to myself. And I don't know. I just lately like I feel like I act like Okay, so let me not say act. So sometimes I care about stuff, right? But like, I'm like, if you really care, why you don't fix it then? So you really don't give a fuck, right? Because let's, like, to me, how y'all feel about that? Like, 
for me i do a lot of ratchet stuff like i feel like even when i come up here i don't give a fuck sometimes like i feel like i try i give effort yes i put makeup on i come up here sometimes i don't sleep my edges like my hair is fucking kinky curly bitch you can suck my dick um i had my braids in for a minute my hair last hairstyle whatever braid sewing same shit um even still me wearing that hairstyle some people are like why are you wearing that old hairstyle and i'm just like bitch i'm not fucking up my real natural kinky curly hair my hair is actually after i took out that hairstyle the healthiest i wouldn't say the health well yeah it is the healthiest let's be honest it's the healthiest i have seen it I, i'm going to post that post actually on my instagram today because my scalp was just serving the girls honey my hair was serving the girls like oh my gosh my hair is just i just love my hair like oh my gosh like some days i be having moments where i want to relax my hair because i'm just tired of just getting paying for braids and shit and I just can't deal with my natural hair. Like, I, I'm, I don't know. Like, I love my natural hair, but I cannot wake up in the morning and do my hair every day. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm not built. I'm not built for that shit. Like, I just can't. Like, I used to be able to do it, but I just... Like, after day two in the week, I'm like, why the fuck did I do this? Why? Why? Why did I decide to wear my natural hair? So, and then I like wearing buns with the... It's just, it's just all bad, bitch. But anyway... Whatever the case may be. I'm not fucking up my hair for y'all motherfuckers. Period. Like, I'm not wearing no motherfucking leave out. I don't want to wear no motherfucking wigs. The wigs be ripping your edges to pieces. My my edges is weak, bitch. Y'all already know. Even with box braids, like, my edges just grew back. They always grow back. But the thing with me and my edges is that I really do want to stop being so aggressive with them. Because after a certain age, your hair don't grow the same. So I've heard, like, if you see, like, older people, sometimes when they don't got no edges, like, bitch, it just don't go back. Like, it just don't be growing back no more, bitch. So at some point, yo, yo, yo fucking cuticles, yo, I mean cuticles, yo fucking hair follicles, bitch, will give up on your ass. They have been through enough. So I, I am trying to be a little more chill on my edges or whatever. But their hair, their back, they're in full effect. Beach. I've been noticed from when I had the hairstyle in. They grew back crazy. Um, so for me, I'm not wearing wigs. I feel like, yeah, bitches could get mad. Then I wear box braids on top of my head with um a sewing. But I could get mad too that motherfuckers wear wigs. You get what I'm saying? If I wanted to, but I'm not like that. I'll support the black community, right? I could say that them wigs be looking fake in person, right? Like these niggas be saying, but I just don't like how um i just feel like i just hate that men and people in general are always in black women's business and in black women's hair so i just so i just get so so that's the thing with me too is about when it comes to me i just feel like leave me the fuck alone like the way i feel like people should leave black women alone i just feel like people should leave Britney alone so that's like more of me but i'm like do you you because you're thinking of it it shows you care a little bit but do you care because you're not fixing it. So I'm like, bitch, you don't even really give a fuck. Because if you gave a fuck, you would fix it. And I don't. Because I just like... So the, what does that mean when you think about something but you refuse to fix it so you must not care that much? Like, you know how people say that? Like, even in dating, like, if, if you talking to a guy and he don't see you in a month, it's like, I feel like he cares about me because he's nice to me when he sees me. But he only sees me once a month. So does he really care about me? Like, that type of thing. Like... I care about how my hair looks, but I still didn't sleep my edges, so do I care? <laughs> Yo, like certain shit, I just like, I just be thinking like, I'm pretty, like, I feel like I think about it like, no, this is what I do, I be like, motherfuckers probably talking shit about my fucking hair. Hmm. Like, I don't care, like, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, too, I feel like, how can I explain? I've always been like this actually too, even from high school. Like, is niggas gonna pay for your hair? Is niggas paying your bills? Like, is niggas gonna take out your hair? Cause bitch, taking out your hair is a headache. Uh, are people gonna, are people gonna do your makeup? Are people gonna film Brooke says? Are people gonna, like whatever you're worried about, can those people that you feel are talking about you fix it? They probably can, but can they do it on your time frame? Like, do they actually care? Like, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy being a human being, bitch. 
So, I remember I was just thinking about a lot of shit and I was just like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I feel like I act like I give a fuck, but I really don't give a fuck because a lot of things, like, I just don't change. And not bad things. Like, if somebody comes to me and tells me I have a personality defect, if I really feel like it's true, then I'll change it. I'm not talking about personality. I'm just talking about who I am. And I guess you can include personality in certain stuff, too. Um, and I just feel like, too, a lot of times I feel like I have good reasoning. So, hey, it is what it is. Um... So, yeah, this week's topic is how not to care. Now, this is a topic we call the popcorn, the Kevin Black topic, bitch. Because, like I said, I am human. I sometimes give a fuck. But I do feel like, in some ways, I am really good at not giving a fuck. I'm not the best at it, but I'm, like, kind of good at it. Like, so sometimes I really be getting in my bag, but I just feel like it'd be, like, emotional, though. Like, if I'm on my period, then I might care about something a little more than I would if I wasn't. Like, I know us women, we hate to hear people say, oh, it's just because you want your period. It's on your period. But it'd be true. Like, when I'm on my period, when my time of the month is coming, my emotions is just way different. Like, I'll look at myself in the mirror and think that, like, my fucking eyebrows are falling off, bitch. Like, I feel like I don't got no eyebrows on. Or I could feel like, like, my fucking freaking finger is falling off bitch like I don't know <laughs> so yes yeah, sometimes I care about things yes I do I definitely care I actually I, I do care about stuff I care about my family I care about my friends I care about lots of things things that I find to be very very important you know I could talk about a host of things that I care about so I'm not saying that like not to care about things especially things that are important i'm saying more of how not to care about remedial shit like posting my opinion right oh i've gotten really good with that like posting clips for brick says like i'll be like before i was just like really analytical now if i find a clip funny and it's within a minute or less than a minute and it's good for tiktok or real i'll post it i don't overthink it i'll just be like that was funny I'm going to post that. Like, it's not... Like, before I used to be super analytical, like, I don't know if that's appropriate. I'm like, bitch, if it's not appropriate, why did you say it? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's on the damn podcast. It's on record, bitch. Like, the shit is on the internet. It's on iHeart. It's on Spotify. It's on podcast app. Hello, good morning. It's on fucking YouTube. It's on Spreaker. Listen, leave a comment. Leave five stars. <laughs> but, like... It all is, anything I say is on record, you know what I'm saying? So, it's just like, that's what I mean. Like, I guess being opinionated, saying what's on your mind. Um, You know, I could be vocal on here, you know. I had to do a couple of things this week. And, and you know what? I did care. Poquito. Poquito. Um... Child, I could tell y'all some stories. Okay. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a good topic. It's a good topic. So, you know, before most topics, what do we like to do? Expand our minds. Expand your mind. Expand your mind. Expand your mind. Not a new expand our mind. <laughs> so, on, um... So this is a a talk. What the fuck? This is an article titled "Ready to Stop Caring What People Think." Here's how to do it in five steps. Written on WellAndGood.com. Written by Jessica Estrada. All right. Um, I just want to read. Okay, I'll read from the beginning. Fine. Right up there with the likes of public speaking, mortality, and rejection is another common anxiety fueler. The fear of what others think when it can show up in many forms, like curbing us from speaking our truth, deciding what we do and don't. Post on social, what we do and don't post on social media. And factoring into big deal life decisions like which jobs to seek. It often holds us back from going after our most sincere goals. Or worse, it can prevent us from being our authentic selves. But before learning how to not care what people think, it's key to first understand why so many of us do and to a strong and enduring extent. Put simply, we are wired to crave a sense of belonging and safety. 
In ancient history, we belong to tribes that ensured our survival as a species, says holistic career and mindset coach Amina Altai. Belonging to a group made life less dangerous. Our primitive brain is still connected to that idea that we need to belong to a group and stay in their good graces in order to survive. While this need to be liked and accepted may have served humans way back when, it now often robs us of our freedom to be ourselves. When we are so focused on being liked or on what other people think, we can step away from our truth and lean into performance, Altai says. We censor ourselves, we water ourselves down and become consummate chameleons in order to be accepted. So, in that article, she speaks about how back then we felt the need to belong to tribes. So, that's why we still feel the need to belong. I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, it might have some correlation. But, um, I just feel like people today is more so is like, we don't want to be problematic. We don't want to be talked about in a bad way, right? Um, you want to feel perfect but none of us are perfect um I, I feel like often it's more about perfection and just being the perfect person you know what I'm saying um and some people are not risk takers right because I, I think I spoke about this I think I'm pretty sure I spoke about it even some people you know even we are afraid to do even really cool things or nice things like as simple as post a picture on social media like posting a picture on social media is not a bad thing as long as it's a picture like some people are so worried about what people will think they can't even do simple things you know like if you post a picture of you looking so gorgeous you're like I don't want people to see me looking gorgeous and it's like there's nothing wrong with looking gorgeous you know what I'm saying so it's even things like that for me even posting your opinion on social media, right? Like I said, I post my opinion on social media all the time. Every week. I'm just running my motherfucking mouth, right? So, really, to not care, you just post it. You know, just in terms of social media, just do it. Just do what, what makes you feel happy. You know, what makes you feel most comfortable. Um, that's really all you could do. Like, don't overthink things like if you want to do something just do it if you don't want to do something then don't do it like sometimes I don't want to sleep my edges I'm not going to do it so we could talk about looks right and appearance and for instance like I was saying like with my hair right I don't want to fuck up my real hair I don't want to have I like I miss leave out days I know what a leave out is when you used to get the sewing and then the top of your hair used to lay on the, the um, weave but that hair that you used to leave out used to be fucked up bitch that shit used to be shorter than all the rest of your hair bitch that shit used to be heat damaged fucked up bad 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 or whatever the case may be because you know you just kept adding heat to it so eventually it would just break off um so you know I just don't like that shit I have natural hair, so at the end of the day, it's going to keep frizzing up. I don't want to wear wigs, right? So I'm, I'm the type of person, I weigh all my options, and I say, I like my hair. I want to keep my hair. I want my hair to continue growing. I want my hair to stay, stay healthy, right? So I do what's best for me and my hair. Some people will do things what they feel is best for society, right? So a girl might... I'm not saying for anybody might wear a wig because she feels like that's what's trendy right now. Wearing a wig is trendy or having straight hair is more beautiful, right? Though this wig is fucking up my edges or my hair, I cannot wear my real hair. I cannot wear braids. I I don't look beautiful with that look. That's where it's a problem, like. Or uh, what do you care about most? Maybe some people, some people actually genuinely don't give a fuck about their hair. Which I get like, me and my hairstylist was talking about how, um, like we, we barely get our hair trimmed. Like I get my hair trimmed, whenever I get my hair trimmed, I get it straightened to get it trimmed. I know it's not necessary, but hey, whatever. 
So I was just, we were just talking about how we get like maybe a silk press or a wash and blow out to get our hair trimmed. But I do mine's like maybe every bitch three to five years. Like I ain't gonna hold you because the thing with me is, is that whenever I straighten my hair, it don't last long. So, and then today, hair is expensive. Like to get a good wash, a silk press is like over a hundred dollars. So my thing is like I'm paying a hundred dollars for a three day hairstyle. So that's why I do it every three to five. Years. <laughs> Not me and a being me and a broke ass bitch like dead ass. I'm dead serious. But I was like, damn. When we was talking about it, I was thinking like, damn. Maybe after this hairstyle, I'm gonna go and get me like a silk press. And get a, like a nice trim or whatever the case would be. And we was just talking about how like some girls be saving them dead ass bitch. Like me, I don't care. You could cut this shit off. I feel like it's going to go right the fuck back. Like cut it off. Cut my dead ends if you want to. Like I don't care. So some people care about length retention. I do want length retention. I want long hair. But at the same token, if you was to cut some hair off, I wouldn't. I don't feel like I would be pressed to be honest like I wouldn't really be pressed like that um so you could cut my shit if you want to or whatever <laughs> like basically that's like the type I boy um so yeah that's pretty much it with that um <laughs> so we was just talking about stuff like that or whatever the case may be so yeah like for me I guess I care about length but if you need to cut some dead ends off I wouldn't be pressed so it's just goes so you know some people don't care about their hair some people don't care about length so some people don't mind not having edges or having short hair or and I don't I don't knock nobody for that. You get what I'm saying? But if you don't if you're doing something to be on the upkeeps like me, I do care about my hair's um quality. I care about the health of it. I actually I don't know why. I just care about my hair. Um so certain things I just won't do to it, you know what I'm saying? Um so that's probably for me. I don't I, I don't care about trends more than I care about my hair's health. Some people care about trends more than they care about their hair's health. And that's absolutely fine. As long as you know why you're doing something and why you're like it's priority. It's not because you care about how people view you, if that makes sense. Like always do stuff because you wanna do it. Or whatever. I feel like a lot of times we do stuff because we like I feel like it's it's like a very teenager type thing. Like sometimes you used to be like Oh, I can't do this because then people are going to say this or think this way. I've oh, you know, not always been like that, but I used to do things like that. Um, the only way, one of the ways to not care is to prioritize what's most important to you. You get what I'm saying? So that's how I prioritize what's most important to me. Sometimes I'll be like, uh, like even when I come up here for Brissette, I'm like, what's more important to me? To get an episode up or to... I don't freaking know like I don't know like certain stuff is just like not priority to me like what is what is the most meaningful thing to me out of whatever decision I'm making and a lot of times we don't do that we don't we don't prioritize what's the most meaningful decision we prioritize what people think and that's what is important to not care what people think. I hope that makes sense. It's like figuring out what do you care about? You know what I'm saying? Um, and of course, all of this stuff aligns with not just anxiety, but insecurities, right? Some of us have a lot of insecurities, you know, just from things we've been through. If we, you could get insecurities from just momentary insecurities. Like, you could have just come out of a bad relationship with somebody who was just really mean to you or whatever. And, you know, for a while, your insecurities is kind of fucked up. So you start changing who you are, becoming somebody who you aren't. Um, even, too, I see people who kind of, like, blew up on, like, social media. And they just become a completely different person. And it's like... You feel like you gotta keep up. Like you feel like you just gotta keep up. But number two, one way not to care too, I feel like is just knowing that people like you. Like people like the truth. People like when people are being themselves. Being yourself always wins. Like so if you doing what you wanna do, that means you're being yourself. When you're being yourself, you won't care what people think. 
And this is why to an extent, to a extent, I kind of love like super outlandish people. Like I, I hope it's never drugs, bitch. Cause a lot of outlandish people do be a little coked up, bitch. But I like them because it, it, to me it shows me that they don't give a fuck. Like to be a crazy ass motherfucker and be loud and be around bunches and just be just singing whatever the fuck is on your mind. It just says that you don't give a fuck. So I kind of enjoy seeing people like that. For some people they get very uh nervous around people like that. I don't because I feel like I feel comfortable around somebody like that. To a degree. I am so annoyed. Like it's all I literally y'all. I live in New York City. I don't got a studio. If y'all want silence in y'all background, y'all gotta start sharing the video. I, I all I could do is try to edit the sound out. But if I don't if I don't film, the shit never gonna get done. So anyway. <sighs> yes. Like I was saying, I love me some crazy people because at the end of the day I feel like they're being their selves and you know being yourself is the best way not to care like I care sometimes like actually I had I had a rough week with caring actually a rough two weeks like two was that two weeks ago or last week I don't remember but basically child, basically I freaking I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. It's not a big deal. Like, I took something, like, kind of personal that was, like, a joke. But it was, like, my womanly stuff going on. So, I think that's why I took it personal. Because then the next day, I woke up acting my regular. Femi was like, yo, you're crazy. Like, you're literally crazy. I'm like, yeah, I'm back. Like, I was crying yesterday. Why well, was it crying? Okay, I was crying. <laughs> not me crying. I think I just be being emotional because... You know, I got a lot going on. I was just being emotional or whatever. And so, I was just like, <laughs> something had happened at work. It was a joke, but I didn't find it funny. It wasn't nothing racial or anything. It was it was nothing serious, to be honest. I was just being a girl. And I think because I was new there, I was just like, oh, I don't like the joke. So, I was like crying. And for me, it was just like, <laughs> you want to quit? I'm like, all right, bring it down. The next day I woke up on 5,000, bitch. Like, it'd be like that. But I obviously cared. Um, something else happened actually this week. Well, technically, last week. Um, should I talk about that? I'm not going to talk about that because I'll bring it up later. It's nothing serious. I don't like when I do that. It's nothing serious. But, you know, sometimes you do care. Let's talk about caring and family and friend instances. Now... With family, I'm big on, and I know some people don't believe in this, and I've been seeing a lot of this. I'm just big on, you, you, at the end of the day, you can't change your family. Like, that's something you cannot change is your family. And all you could do is set boundaries between you and your family. Sometimes family is, I'm not even, some people say older family members, but I think all ages are just very blunt, very real, sometimes very honest. You know, they could say things and not pay attention to what they say and you care about it. Lately, you know, if my family tells me something, I take it for what it's... I take, I take what they say and I try to take what I want out of it. Not I don't like that because it sounds like I'm not listening. I, I try to think about what they said because at some point in time too, you have to realize that some of the shit people be saying don't be true. So that's the other thing is like... You can't care about everything people say because not everything people say is 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 one hundred percent true. Some stuff is just projection. Some stuff is things people say about you that because they wish they could be like that or they're trying to dim your light or they're trying to make you feel less than. So sometimes you gotta really be able and and that's important in our caring too is knowing what what whatever is being said or done to you. Is this something you deserve? Is this something that's meaningful? Is this something that's true? You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to really know, like, you just have to know. Like, you just, like, I can't explain. Like, you just, you got to know, like, yourself, basically. Because sometimes, you know, family might say things to me and I'm just like, mm, that's kind of true about me. But then sometimes I'm just like, Every, some stuff just be perceptional, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
you feel that way because you want me to be that way and that's not the way I want to be and that could be problematic but it, it, it's it's like I want to give an example but I, I don't want to get into that today <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to chill lately, as you can see. Um, but, you know, sometimes certain things, people just want you to be away. And that's not who you want to be. Or that's just not something you want to do. Or whatever the case may be. Um, or maybe you're just not like that. Um, when it comes to friends, you know, a lot of people say friends are replaceable and things like that. Um... Friends too, if you in a group of friends, like sometimes when you in a whole group with your friends, people say things, slick things, smart things, and and we have a tendency to care about the things that people say. Um you know, you gotta y'all gotta protect your mental health. I feel like um I feel like sometimes people are not bad people. It's just that when they get around so, uh, look, that could be an episode. Some people believe certain things that I don't necessarily maybe at this age believe in like some people believe like no I like people who consistent no matter what circle they're in or who they're around because some people do switch up when they get in certain um environments or cer around certain people they start to like change and stuff um and some people say some people feel like you shouldn't hang around somebody like that. I feel like if you know that a specific person is a certain way around certain people, then don't hang around them around those people. But some people say don't hang around that person at all. But that's a different topic. But basically what I'm trying to say is like, just just don't pay everything so much mind. Like, I don't know. Like, sometimes if people be dealing with their own shit, like, try not to pay every and anything somebody says mind. Like... Like, it's hard. I know. I know firsthand. I told y'all, this topic is a popcorn and kettle black. It's like, for me, or, okay, let's say you are going to care, right? It's about how long you care. Like, some people, for me, I, what I try to do is I don't try to bring nothing to bed. If you, you up at night just think about some shit somebody said to you or did to you, then that's when it gets problematic. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you go to sleep and you wake up in the morning and you on a different wavelength. You feel me? Um, you just can't let things consume you. Like, if you're going to care, you can't care all day. I'm sorry. Or all week or all month or all year. Like, certain stuff is just not worth it like you gotta protect your mental health it's not easy though it's not easy or another way not to care about remedial shit is to worry about things that really matter right so i like to consume my things with things i really like care about like the podcast right if i'm sitting down sometimes at work right I could, my mind could roam, and I'd be like, oh, I should think about a topic for Brit Says. Now, if I'm thinking about topics for Brit Says, I can't even, I can't think about shit that people do at the same time. Like, I can't do that. Or if you want to, like, do something, sometimes what's things that we want to do? Like, you know, random things are watching TV. Like, I watch a YouTube video, watch, you know, Tasha K or something, and I'm thinking about the shit these fucking celebrities are doing. I can't even focus on what the fuck I'm doing. And that's another thing with blogs and stuff like that. People use that to escape from their real life. And, bitch, and if that was what, what works, then fine. Because you can't kill yourself worried about some shit somebody said or did to you. You get what I'm saying? Um, Obviously, some things are bigger than other things, right? Some shit you do need to worry about. You know, big incidents, things that are very, very traumatic those are things you don't just stop caring about those are things you're supposed to heal from so this is the difference between not caring about something and healing from something because a lot of people do that you go through things that are traumatic and you feel like i'm gonna just not care you can't do that i just want to make that clear that this episode is not about that this episode is about not caring about what like little stupid shit stupid shit people say something somebody said to you that wasn't that deep like they don't like your hair they don't like your nails or or i don't fucking know what motherfuckers say you y'all know or shit that people do like little shit stuff that people might do to you at work or whatever it's definitely not about dealing with trauma because that's something you have to 
in some ways care care about to heal from it right you have to go to therapy and talk about it constantly and try to move on from it and talk about how it makes you feel and those are things that you have to give a fuck about okay you have to and healing from trauma can help you learn not to care about certain shit because when you go through some shit a lot of things that you used to care about really don't mean shit to you no more. I, I can tell you firsthand, like, certain stuff that I used to give a fuck about, like, it can't even break me. I'm like, I'm, I always say this, like, I would be like, D but does it hurt? Like, that was my thing. Like, if some somebody would say or do something to me, I would say, but does it hurt? Like, is it painful? Like, when you experience pain, and I mean pain, I'm not talking about emotional pain, I mean physical pain and emotional at the same time if you think about that i don't know if this is a healthy method i don't know might bring it up in therapy but for me sometimes i would do that like if i was upset about something and it wasn't that serious i would say does this hurt like does this physically hurt are you in pain like i would dead ass say that shit and I would compare it to a lot of the pain that I have been through, like real pain, and it would it would make me feel better. I don't know if that's healthy though. I don't. I think I did bring it up in therapy before. This was like a while back though. I don't remember what she said. I'm gonna bring it up again though, because this was a, diff a different therapist. But I think she said something where she was like, it, "That could be a good and a bad thing," because because the thing is, is like. A lot of things are painful, but they don't always hurt physically. So because I was comparing it to certain things, to physical pain, that's where it could become um, problematic, right? Because you could get heartbroken, but it may not physically hurt like surgery might hurt, right? It might hurt in a weird way, like when you feel nauseous or you want to throw up. But feeling nauseous doesn't feel as painful as abdominal surgery. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, it's it, those, they don't relate. So if you say, but if you saying, oh, but does it hurt? And you're comparing it to actual physical pain and you're trying to move on from something, that's where it could become problematic. So... I mean, you gotta pick and choose your battles, bitch. I'm saying for remedial shit, like if it's very remedial, it, you could try it. It worked for me. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I, you know, I'm no professional. And let me make it very fucking clear. But it definitely does work for me sometimes, you know. Um, it definitely does. So, I mean, you could try it. I'm not, I'm no professional. But make sure you, you know, doing it well. Um, and yeah, just think about all the things you've been through, you know, sometimes. I, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing to like, like people do all the time, like I've been through worse, I've experienced worse, like I've been through worse, I can get through this. And it's like, it's true though. Like, are you going to get upset because somebody said a slick comment about you and your relationship or something when you've been through worse? Like, is it really needed for you to give a fuck about that? Are you going to really be upset that somebody commented on your outfit when you've gone through worse and survived? Like, come on. Are you really going to be upset? Let's get into that bag that somebody asked you why aren't you married yet? Let's get in the millennial bag. Why haven't you had kids yet? What else people say to um people in their 30s? Why aren't you married yet? Why haven't you had kids yet? Why don't you have a man? If you're a guy, why don't you have a girl? Which if you if you, you date your same sex, why you don't have a, a man, girl, whatever, then they, us, why, why are you not dating, bitch? Um, what else people say? Why you don't got a job? <laughs> People always got something slick to say. Um, why you still live with your parents? What else people say? I can, say, I can, I can talk, bitch. People ask you all these questions when you in your 30s, right? And sometimes people say it very subliminally, very shady. And it upsets you sometimes. And it makes and you start to care about it. You start to think about about yourself and, and what, what you could do differently. Um, look, when people... 
start saying things that might hurt your feelings or make you feel a type of way. Start thinking about all the things you've overcome, all the things that you've achieved. So not just the things that you've overcome, right? Because I, I brought that up, like, think about stuff that hurt you and you got past it. But things you've achieved, right? Like, look at all the things you've done. Sometimes we forget to do that. Like, just remember, like, all of your accomplishments, all the things you've ever done in your life. Like, it's crazy. Just have some, some sense of gratitude, you know? And you will feel better. I, I It personally works for me. Like... Think about everything or everything you have. Dead ass. Do y'all ever think about everything you currently have that some people don't? Like, literally. Just to feel better. Just be thankful. Thank God. Like, just think about everything. Like, I'm talking about minuscule shit. Like, that you got fucking food in your fridge. You got a roof over your head. You got running water when you take your showers and your baths, bitch. Okay. You got life. You breathing. Let's get in that bag. You feel me? So, that's another way not to care. It's just be like, just have gratitude and just think about everything. Like, yeah, they want to say, why I'm not doing this? Why I'm not doing that? This person wants to be shady today, but look at me. And if you want to be getting your petty bag, because there's a petty version to this too, how not to care. And I think it's pretty fucking healthy, bitch. Somebody say something about you, I feel like everybody got flaws. Everybody got something fucked up going on in their life. You could be like, well, bitch, I ain't got a man, but her nigga cheat on her. And it's going to make you feel better. <laughs> how you say it? It's going to make you feel better. Oh, well, bitch, I got no kids, but this bitch broke. Like... You, it's gonna make you feel better. Is it appropriate? No, but you don't have to say it out loud. But you can go home and get in your bag, bitch. It's gonna make you feel better because it it shows you like I, I had to do that too. That's another thing too. That's mad funny to me. Like it be killing me too. And think about and also too when people say and do shit to you, think about the person that's saying it and doing it right. And when I say that, it's like I remember I was thinking about something. Somebody said, and I was thinking in my head, the audacity. Like, the audacity. Sometimes y'all be getting mad and don't even realize the person that's fucking talking to you that said that shit. Like, really think. Like, really, really think. Like, sometimes I gotta be thinking in my head, like, the audacity. You audacious. Like, if you, if you, sometimes you so focus on what a person said, you don't even realize this. The person that said that shit to you. The person that said that shit to you be contradicting themselves. You be like, you of all motherfucking people, bitch. Or you of all motherfucking people, motherfucker. Like, really think about that shit logically. Like, for real. Like, I'll think about things that... <laughs> Yo, I, 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 I can't even give an example because I could be problematic. But I'll really think about shit and be like, I really got this motherfucking person... Getting me in my bag and X, Y, they be doing X, Y, Z. Like, for real. And you don't want to be that person, but you have to sometimes in order for you to really move on and strive in your life. Like, you really have to pay attention to the people that's talking to you. Like, sometimes, like, this motherfucker, like, you of all people, like, and that's why a lot of us don't have room to talk. Me, myself, all of us don't got no room to be talking to no motherfucking body. Or I think every human being technically we don't have room to talk to nobody, right? In some cases, people with money have room to talk, right? They made a business, it's successful. You could talk business, yes, we could talk that. You could talk money. But can you talk relationships? Let's be honest. Okay, like, can you tell me I need to get my shit together and you got a drug addiction? Like, it, it, it be that type of shit for me. Like, some, some shit like that, like... Yeah, you got money, but you be doing dumb shit too. Like, it's that type of thing. And I'm not saying take advice. Like, if the advice is good, take it. If it's advice, because there's a difference between advice and just people being shady and disrespectful. And you got to know. Like, these, these are ways not to care. Like, who, who, what, why, who are they to tell me this shit? Like, think about, like, this is my language. Like, start thinking about the people that's saying shady shit to you and all the dumb shit they do or are currently doing or all the shit going on in their life. And I'm not saying that that person is devalued, but I'm just saying, like, 
basically take it with a grain of salt. That's basically what the fuck I'm saying. And don't take it but so personal because they ain't but so much shit neither. That's really what I'm trying to allude to. Okay? It doesn't devalue somebody's opinion or idea. Because just because I feel like I'm problematic or you feel like you're problematic, it doesn't mean you're not smart or intelligent or what you're saying sometimes is not true. But sometimes people won't be shady and they ain't shit. And so that might make you feel better. I'm, I'm just here to help you learn how not to care. <laughs> okay? And y'all can take that with a grain of motherfucking salt, bitch. Okay? I'm just here to teach you how not to care. And that is one way how not to care or whatever. Um... It's, it's just that simple, you know. Um, it's not easy, people. It's not easy. Um, I think this is one of the hardest things to do. Um, you're going to care sometimes. You're going to care often. But I think what's most important is that as long as you don't let it consume you, as long as you don't let it take over who you are, make you want to become suicidal, lead you to depression and anxiety and all these things, then you'll be just fine. Like, because you're going to care. We're human, so we care about things naturally. So, fine. I get that. But, as long as you don't allow these things to consume you, that's all I ask. Because you don't want something somebody said to bring you off the deep end where you just can't even function in your daily life, you know? Like, that's, that's what this episode is mostly about. Because, like I said, you're going to always care sometimes. Like, I mean, it is what it is. But, just don't let it consume you. That's all. Just don't let it take over your daily life. And, and even, and, and I even, I, I really feel like we should try to, try to move on from things within an hour time frame. An hour is a long motherfucking time. That's 60 minutes. So, anything over an hour, you know, you might have to beat that person's ass. Now, I'm just playing. <laughs> just, you know, just don't allow the petty things and the petty things that people do. And the petty things that people say and petty behaviors consume you and make you want to go off the deep end or, or, or fucking lose your job or lose your life or, or, or lose your freedom, bitch. Some of y'all be like, end up in jail, bitch. Just... Keep calm, know who you are, be yourself, and prioritize you. And that's Brit says what it is. Yes. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that episode just as much as I did. And yeah, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and score Instagram. And if you're streaming, make sure you comment and leave five stars. And I will see you guys when next week. Bye.